in true Blue Peter fashion. Here's one that we assembled earlier. Again, we've put all our pouches and capability on the molly belt. We kept everything off the actual vest itself, and that's for tactical reasons, because most insurgents and asymmetrical combat contacts tend to happen in alleyways, in shanties, and in tunnels. And the more bulked up a vest is, the more difficult it is for you to function and move in those areas. So when donning it, we start with the comma bond, which clicks in, and the side. And about lastly, we have the perineum protector. Now this is also designed, because a soft pack comes up to here, to tuck under the belt to give the bladder a little bit more protection. And then fastens in. And this then tucks in like a nappy. Now here, the only thing that you would want here would either be a comms pack or one and two IC may have a commander's pouch here. Everything is on your belt order. In this configuration, you've got full movement, full articulation, you can twist in whatever angle you want. Everything moves and you can articulate. There's no Velcro on it, so there's no restrictions in diaphragm movement, so from here, I can expand my chest fully, I have no restrictions if I need to move quickly and all the weight is managed and distributed on the musculoskeletal, mu musculoskeletal chassis so everything is maximised for comfort. To complement a vest system and having a haulage and rucksack capabilities to go with it, it needs to be designed to be integrated. So we looked at um, operational capabilities, operational deployments, um, and the needs of a dismount when he's in a field, in a fob, or a, a patrol base. So, the first thing we did was having a bag that's specifically designed to a, to a vest means you can only wear it with a vest. So we gave it a little bit more modularity. So this is designed as a normal long-range patrol Bergen. It has our unique pad system down the back that we designed with the Royal College of Physicians and again works as a normal Bergen. It has all the unique features that you would come to associate with Cribgoff. So we have expandability. So what we did is we looked at side pouches with different operational capabilities. Um, if you have um, pouches that attach onto the side of a rucksack the problem you get is when you want to use full um, rotator cuff articulation it restricts that movement here so we then designed our side pouches here to come out and expand at an angle an angle that then allows full rotator cuff movement when the rucksack is on your back and it gives you an extra 20 litres aside. On the front of the bag we had some unique changes. We've got a special pocket here, we've got one that's stuffed. Here you can see that allows you to carry a troop radio. We've got both side access for uh, handsets and we have a number of pockets here that allow for antennas, whether it's a, a new um, lightweight ECM or troop uh, main troop radio comms pack or you can use it for extra storage. A couple of unique features that we did with it was we designed it at the front to come down so we've got instant access to it to change the battery so the downtime was significantly less than having to completely pull it out and um, change the batteries when you are operational. Other features of the bag, one requirement that everybody wanted, especially when they're going to a point of deployment and carrying lots of kit, was to be able to put things through on the lid. So everyone wanted a lid that would expand. 
So for that facility to function, we put a zip in the lid here, and the lid then disengages and allows it to expand and lift up to carry more kit. And we have further expansion here on the front compression straps that that allow you to stow more kit. Inside here, we have cross compression and of course a snow skirt to stop any external um, environmental contamination in the bag. One thing that's become more apparent in recent years is the need for front loader access to a bag. So again, we gave the bag the capability where you have complete access to the bag if you want front, front access. We put internal pockets into it, it has a bladder pocket and again we put special compression straps inside the bag to hold the kit down because the more kit moves in the bag at the back the more energy you expend compensating for that movement. So we have three 60 degree all the way around the bag compression capability to stop that movement and to make the kit more comfortable for you. In the process of allowing the expansion on the lid of the bag, you can remove it completely and in a worst case scenario, the bag then becomes a 20 litre grab bag should you ever feel the need to E&E. So we've got a grab bag for a lid that converts into the rucksack and of course you've got the main body of the rucksack which is 90 litres and expands to 110 litres once you've filled in all the pockets. Now in its current format here it's designed to be used against the back or against a light belt order as previously shown with uh, the Rogue Assembly. We then decided to take it further where from here the back then zips off. Now we put a small pocket in here and two compression straps on the back because if you do get to your long term objective and you have to set up a layup point or an observation point you have to take anything to altitude you don't want to be doing it with a full Bergen so this gives you other operational capabilities that are designed into the back of the, uh, of the back system that gives you further enhanced capabilities operationally. Here we then designed a second back system that is designed to encapsulate the back plate that sits in the back of Rogue or the Spartan Tactical Vest. These are then designed to sit down the channels of the um, butt stops here and it's designed to sit into and onto the back of a tactical vest. Again it has a number of unique features which we'll go into just now. So just to recap, the back system here is designed to integrate with the, the back plate and the vest system as it sits onto the back of the vest. It also works with the belt order, so you can actually keep your belt order fully kitted on while you're carrying your Bergen. Now, the main point of this is because we've removed the back system, most other Bergens and rucksacks have a padded system that, when fitted with a vest, pushes the weight further away from the back. We've got ours as close to the back as we possibly can. It's designed and integrated to sit and streamline with the vest, with the belt order, because we also have the pad system that's integrated into the vest that works with the musculoskeletal chassis. Again, develop the Royal College of Physicians, again, maximizes weight distribution and significantly enhances comfort. So currently I have a capacity of over 100 litres on my back that's integrated, sits in, is not pulling me back, is not digging into my armpits and allows me to function as well as I can with this kind of size and weight on my back. It is n this particular pack is not fully weighted up, we've got somewhere in the region of about 28 kilos in it. But doffing a bag 
in operational circumstances, if you get compromised, if there's an issue, you have to do it quickly. In combat, many troops have learnt to their distress. They've had to put the weapon down to take the bag off. So again, we looked at this operational capability. You can still have one hand on a weapon. You can remove the bag significantly quickly and it's gone like so in a matter of seconds with still one hand on your weapon. Yeah, again, an enhanced operational capability. Now we've done two bags, so that's the big Bergen. We've also done exactly the same again for a day sack or a patrol bag. So we've got it where it's in use as a camp bag, you can use it as a camp bag. And we've done this one purposely as a front loader or a clamshell bag and not as a top loader as you've just seen with the Bergen. So this again is designed to fit on for use around a camp and then it zips off the back and we have exactly the same scenario only with a smaller patrol pack so again it will encapsulate the back plate and the back into the vest it will work with the belt order we gave it two compartments, so whether you want to put your personal protective equipment in both compartments or if you want to put a troop radio in or an ECM, it will carry either. We have special pockets here that are designed to come over that will allow you access to your antennas if you're actually carrying electronic equipment. And a second compartment here that is purposely designed for your personal protective equipment and your operational needs. Again, we've done special handset access pockets, left or right, to, to meet any requirement. We have two quick access pockets for battle winning equipment. And what we've also added is butterfly detail to the compression straps to take the strain off the zips when the zips are fully loaded up. We did this as a unique feature to Crib Gok and we use this quite a lot in our designs because the bag is only as good as the zip and if the zips are stressed and damaged what we want to do is to increase the longevity of the bag so we spread the torque load over a bigger area so it gives the zip more protection. Exactly the same features, it has the quick release mechanism, full same capability as the Bergen, just that it's a day bag. Any one of these bags can be tailored to suit a specific operational need. Cribgok has that capability. We tend to look more to the usability and the end user requirements than we do for an overall requirement. That said, it's the guy who's in the field, it's the guy who's operational that wants the kit to work to give him a better than average chance of coming out of his deployment in one piece and we think we are reaching those objectives quite clearly and ahead of any other thought processes that we've currently seen in the market.